Hey guys, I'm Captain Foley, leader of Section 31. Welcome back to Track Yards. Don't get used to it. I'm gonna take you out of command and kill you like I killed my mother. Oh wait, that's Giorgio. Um, to my Giorgio today. The, the, um, both ever interesting and ever the same character, uh, for season two. She gets a, a nice second role in this episode and, uh, kind of dethrones the sort of king at the end, sort of. Um... Ah uh, yes. Well, yeah. Talk us did I not? Did I not call this? Putting her in Section Thirty One was a bad idea. Anyone mm -hmm. that considered that a good idea is a moron. Uh, yeah, she has her own agenda. Uh, we see her talk to Michael, tell her the well the truth about them extracting Spock's memories, and how we need to get Spock out of here mm -hmm. again. <laughs> and it's to make. Leland looked bad in the end, which is good for Giorgio. It was a great back and forth there of why she's helping Burnham with this. Uh, so, <sighs> yeah. Um, and at the end, we get kind of a doozy, a, a whopper, if you will. She basically tells Leland that he's no longer uh, in charge. He's not calling the shots anymore because she's got some information on him that uh, he obviously wouldn't want Michael to find out. He's basically responsible for the death of her parents and turning her into Batman. So, um, <laughs> or Burnham. Um, so yeah, was he directly responsible for their deaths? Did he kill them or did maybe he was just responsible mm. for the attack on the colony? Um, but yeah, she's got other plans. Uh, she's attempting to take control of section 31. And you know, it could very well be that this, uh, the way she handles things is why Section 31 kind of goes off the books and mm. goes back into the realm of obscurity mm. because uh, it goes really bad because of what she has planned. She's she's going to be a pain in the ass for a while. Mm. But I, 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 I have a feeling that Leland is going to be in the Section 31 show. Um, a lot of people are speculating she, he's going to die soon. She's going to kill him, take control. But mm. I, I, think it, I think it would benefit the show to have him in it. I mean, you can tell once they had the idea of doing another Section 31 something, you know, beyond just this season, they instantly r were changing the Giorgio character from how you see her as the Mirror Empress, you know, Space Hitler, the one that kills and eats Kelpians, the one that genocided the Klingon race, you know, just no redeeming qualities except her, her love for Michael in the other universe although was going to kill her, so that only goes so far. And then now in season two, they clearly like, oh, we need to make her much nicer. And they softened her like a good 25, no, 50%. <laughs> so she's very much changed by her experiences. Although as um, Spock said in, in Mirror Mirror, it's much easier for a civilized person to live amongst animals and animals to live amongst civilized people. And that always comes back, and so I, I obviously the, the least civilized of the of the uh, of us is Section Thirty One, so she fits in best there. But every action she's done has been relatively useful. She helped Dylan and helped Dylan, and, and you know she's she's always doing something helpful to tell the audience, ah, she's useful until the penny drops and she'll be doing something really horrible. But it's interesting they give us the context that she's trying to help because the, even the acting is like positive. Well, they try and give us little hints of being bad, but I mean, it's really not the same play that she was in, you know, as the emperor. She's very much given up on her life. All the secret plan is to, you know, is is to get back. Uh, it's it's interesting, and her. Do you think her plan is very much just to uh, get control of some of Section Thirty One to lead into her new show, and that and that would mean that the Section Thirty One is just a means to an end in this season. And not like a, because not necessarily been a focus. It's just a way of getting Tyler back, a way of getting Giorgio back, a way of having a a friendly ship, and, and giving us exposition because they they're able to have tech and science beyond where the Federation is. If if he sort of sidesteps them as a major major th plot plot point to the having section they want show. What do you think? Uh, possibly, but. As I said, I don't want a Section 31 show led by... Well, she's obviously going to be a lead, but I don't want her being in command. I think her being 
lower on the totem pole and kind of having to go behind the scenes and have her own agenda um, would be way more entertaining than seeing her in in charge of Section 31. Um, I don't think they would allow her to ever be in charge, personally. Um, so it's really hard to say what they have planned in that regard. Uh, I, like I said, I like Captain Leland. I think he's a good good uh, character, good actor. Uh, I'd want, I want to see more of him. Like how how much of him is dupli, du, dupli, duplicitous? Yeah, <laughs> um, we don't really know. Um, he seemed really nice in this episode, but again, according to Hirsch, he has his own agenda, and I don't know. I would you turning that back around on you? Would you want to see him in the Section Thirty One show? Oh, sure. It'd be weird to build up what little they've got and then rip it right down. Giorgio isn't interesting enough as a lead or even as a primary secondary. She's a, she's a good ensemble, a good little side foil. You know, she, she, she don't think she'd play strong as a, an actual, actual lead. You know, head head of a team where the team is more, you know, influential than her in the sense of she's got the tech. You know, if, if it was like a four-person section thing on strike team, there's the tech person, there's the negotiator, there's the weaponsmith, and she's just the team leader. But really... Most of the scenes use them talking more than her to do stuff. You know, lead it like like Kirk. I watched an episode um, a few days ago where there's there's a planet created in a thousand years only, and there's an automatic defense system trying to stop intruders, and and uh, the episode has them uh, him and three officers beam down, and one of them dies, and Kirk's giving orders, and then they've all got special skills, and all Kirk can do is give orders. And then wait for news because his skill is command. So all he does is just walk around a bit. He doesn't, he doesn't actually do anything except the command bit because he's a command officer. So Giorgio, while she's more general than that, because of the command role, not necessarily as the whatever. Anyway, so yeah, I just should see them both. And I want to hit one thing about Leland. I found it very jarring that I liked the play that. Okay, he's responsible for the Vulcan, or well, he's you know, he didn't stop the Vulcan uh, extremists from killing uh, the colony, or was it Klingon extremists, whichever whichever Klingons, extremist faction? Yeah. yeah, killed the colony, uh, or or he gave them the target, he turned the shields down, blah blah blah, blah whatever. But then, but uh, then um, uh, Michelle Yeoh, uh, Giorgio says, you know, you don't my, you don't burn them to find out. And it's like why the hell she's so unimportant? Why would she? Why would he care? Like, why are you using Burnham's name with a Section 31 higher-up leader as if he's anybody less than a non-important person? Why would he care? He's, she's already run away. She's not. You don't, she obviously doesn't trust you. The only reason you'd Burnham is to get to Spock, and she's already taken Spock. So Burnham means nothing to you. Why is that? A, and, and the way the scene played out was as if, well, Liam, I'll keep that secret, secret if you'd give me command so Burnham won't ever find out. And it's like... Tell Burnham what what are you on about, Giorgio? Go to hell. Why should, why do I um, care? It's very really strange. Go, it's jarring. Unless yeah, unless they go stupid with it and it's all so it's all a conspiracy and made sure that Sarek was there so that Sarek would take care of Michael Burnham, and then they'd have a, a link to Michael to uh, Sarek, the the Vulcan ambassador. I mean, if they do something stupid like that, I'm just going to zone right out. If this was all a grand mastermind plan, take uh, Burnham even more special. Exactly, that would tune me out. But uh, that's how it's com- that's how it sounds. Like it's coming off as from Giorgio that Leland intended for all this to happen. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. Where he- if he did it, fine, whatever. Why would Michael? I mean, Michael would obviously be upset about it. But but she's the she's smallest not- fish. Exactly, exactly. Uh, but she's not the smallest fish in Discovery. So no, she's you not. Know. <laughs> like it would have been more interesting if she'd said, "Don't make me send the transmission to Starfleet." To, or to Cornwall, like there's a, there's a, a anyone is a better threat than Burnham. You're, you're a section. Th- you really think Sloane would be worried if, if Bashir told someone something? It's Sloane. It's mm-hmm. not. You know what I mean? But section thirty one is being played very differently. Like even, even the way he was playing those scenes was so gentle, and so yeah, was, he was playing her a hundred percent. There was no reality in what he was doing, which in itself was interesting. And obviously Giorgio was playing. They're both playing Burnham and Leland. It's all one big game, but they're too friendly and positive, and it's just not... You can see that if the plan is to darken them, 
it's weird because we don't necessarily like dark for dark's sake, but they're so unlike Section 31, it's kind of bizarre. And it's even more jarring when Amanda and Sarek talk about Section 31 as if it's nothing. It's like, Jesus, why is this so cav... But it does feel now just bland and, you know, oh, they're just a division, you know, no, which they are. They're at the office, yeah. Yeah, um, so it'll be fun to see if we do get the reason for why they become the super secret, no one knows about them people. Uh, but George is planning that. Oh, yeah. I get the feeling that most of the general population thinks that Section Thirty One is like the covert ops of Starfleet, which they they do have a covert ops division later. But Section Thirty One is also there, way in the background. So again, this could all lead to the fact that Section Thirty One kind of gets disbanded or becomes the central intelligence agency for the Federation, the public face, and then the real Section Thirty One kind of continues maybe without the Admiralty's knowledge, in the background, uh, doing their own thing. It's just weird, because Section 31 is a is a is is an expression of the Charter, saying it's that, you know, do what, must, yeah, do what must be done. So by everyone knowing what you are, who you are, everyone knows it's the group that do what must be done, and the context of that is clear. You know what I mean? It's not... The, the name is, is the fact that they can do whatever they want. It's, it's just weird that, you know, it's just weird they, they play it. Um, but I think her master plan is very much to be in control, maybe to create her own splinter cell, have that power. I would like to see it, her going back to Mirror Universe. I think that would be a strong uh, point of that season, of her Mirror Universe season, is to build this technology level, build this, you know, get a ship that can travel with a team she trusts. Uh, that is doing it for real reasons, and she she dangles something in front of that section twenty one. You know, I'll give you the plasma bomb; it can destroy. Mm. You know, May mm. maybe her plan is eventually she holds the Federation um, or Starfleet Admiralty hostage, essentially threatening to destroy something on Earth. Then they get taken down, and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden it's like section thirty one is now gone. It was killed with Giorgio. Oh, they became terrorists, and then we dealt with them, but not yes. really. But only yeah, that branch exactly. of it, right? That's interesting. And, and that could yeah. definitely turn them to the more covert that we see in uh, Deep Space Nine. Because, yeah, I mean, that that would work for me. I can see that being the mm. whole course of the Section 31 show, this whole plan that leads up to something that ultimately ends up failing and then explains why Section 31 is Although very, it, very, it, very covert. It would be weird to pitch a show where your lead character is actually the villain of the show. <laughs> and the whole end of the show is them being killed and destroyed. It's a nice little show. package. Just, it's a nice little package. It's it's just what Gene wanted. Just this sort of Star Trek <laughs> ho hope for the future of threatening Earth and killing people. Star Trek! I mean, fictional show just invented there, but yeah, I mean, it's... Oh, dear me. It's tricky. We'll anyway. See. Yeah. But it's definitely breadcrumbs. <laughs> the, the Giorgio oh, stuff yeah. is breadcrumbs. I'm, I'm, it's both... It's funny, It's there's not a lot of it, but it's kind of jarring when it does jump in because of how not secret it is how not special it feels anymore they've really de they've literally done in three episodes devalued section 31 to a to a just a part of the federation it's really strange how quickly they've done that just mm, mm, section 31, mm. it's weird that mm -hmm. very weird <laughs> what do you guys think what is her long-term plan mm. uh what would you like to see from domination section 31 show? <laughs> Do you want Leland to stick around? Do you want her to kill him soon? Are you expecting him to be dead soon? Or is he going to be in the show, Section 31? Who knows? Let us know in the comments down below. And as always, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to check out our social media. And click the notification icon so you can notify it every time we upload these crazy, insane, weird theories. But of course, share. Anyway, I think fans would enjoy it. It's a great free way of helping. On yes. Facebook, Twitter, MySpace, Instagram, if you can. Anyway, MySpace. think fans, there we go. We enjoy. But what other great ways financially can people help? Oh, there's a Teespring store link Ooh. in the description below. Lots of cool uh, Trek Yards merchandise there. Uh, a lot of people have picked up some of the shirts and mugs, and they shared pictures, and damn, they're fantastic. So go check them out. There's course, more on the way. There will always be more new stuff. And, of course, Patreon. Great way of supporting us every single month. What other ways, Jeff? Trek Yards at... No, trekyards.com. I almost said at hotmail.com. Trekyards.com. There's a donate button. Or you can just uh, PayPal us uh, a, a donation as well. There's a PayPal donation link in the mm -hmm. description as well. So lots of ways to help out. And, of course, just join our Super Chat Lives every week, a couple yes. of times. 
It's great to talk to the community. You guys get to talk to us and uh, share the track love, interest, and analysis because that's what we do here at Track Guards. So join in Super Chat and thanks so much in advance. Until next time, I am a secret. And I'm Special Agent Foley. Bye, guys. <laughs>